what am I wanting to do with this one precious life? And the thing we don't talk enough about is your life is about how you feel. And if how you feel is correlated with what's going on around you and you can't feel how you want to feel until everything externally changes, now you're a prisoner in your own life. Hey, self-care warriors. Welcome back to the ASCC podcast. I'm your host, Bettina, and I'm so thrilled to welcome the one and only Rebecca Silence. She's a superstar in emotional health coaching and relationship healing. Rebecca, your work to help people break free from trauma and reclaim the love they deserve is truly awe-inspiring. And I cannot wait for our listeners to soak up your expertise. Everyone, let's welcome Rebecca Silence. Oh, Bettina, thank you so much for having me. Let's have a life-changing conversation today. So, Rebecca, tell me, like, what are you like your favorite thing to talk about when you talk about things on shows like like you know what it's a great show when i get to talk about this and this and i get to share this and this yeah i mean there's so many different ways i can answer that right but lately i've been talking about this new term i coined high functioning unhappiness and i think i'm a generational trauma healer and really the people that attract me in their lives are also the generational healer. But what I've realized is that's a terrifying term. And so <laughs> this idea of high functioning unhappiness is an accessible entry into the generational trauma conversation. And my big mission is for kids to have healed parents and for people to be healed and fully expressed. So primarily in love and in relationship, they're not fighting with the ghosts of their past. They're yeah. the healed adult and they can see people for who they are, not who they're projecting onto them because they're recreating the experience of all their unhealed stuff. Yes. So but, I mean, there's a million ways we can go. I'm so important to you, Rebecca. I mean, I'm an incest survivor. I grew up in so much trauma and with unhealed parents that were doing their best and I knew it could be better. And then it didn't matter that I knew it could be better or that I had a degree and a board certification as a music therapist or a 4.0 GPA with a master's in counseling. I ended up in a domestic violence marriage too. And I left with a baby and realized, all right, understanding trauma is not enough. There is a next level of depth to healing that can have people truly setting themselves free. And with my book, it was all about like writing a book that explained how to use generational trauma to your advantage, how to use any trauma to your advantage. And right. for me, when I got diagnosed with cancer, I get a 5% chance to live. I'm in my second marriage. I have a new baby on the way. And I realized, all right, this isn't my childhood sexual abuse all over again. I healed that. So now the healed me knows there's nothing I can't heal. If I can heal that, I can heal anything. And the healed me got to be in charge of cancer, which meant I got to beat the 5% chance they gave me to live. Oh, I love that. So how did you get to that next level? Like, yeah, I think, you know, it really took cancer to integrate and lock in what I already knew when I was living. I think, you know, there's these four stages of learning. It starts with unconscious incompetence. So we don't even know what we don't know. Right. Then it moves into conscious incompetence, which is where most people just want to give up and throw in the towel because now I'm aware of where I'm misaligned. And a lot of people have guilt and shame when it comes to that, right? And then there's conscious competence. So I think before cancer, I was living this conscious competence. I teach the practice of emotional healing. I teach the pattern, if it's upsetting to you or off at all, is an experience you had and you're stuck at a stuck age and there's a stuck emotion. And so we just have to heal up the stuck age and heal through the stuck emotion and connect to your spirit and 
then the healed you gets to be in charge. So I was living that for years, but then cancer happened. And that fourth stage of learning is unconscious competence. And cancer had me so locked in to my spirit and to God that there was nothing to figure out ever again. And I went through a whole spiritual identity crisis because I was like, I don't even know who I am. I don't even know if I believe anything I've taught. I don't even know I believe in God. Like, what is going on here? You know, and I got this opportunity. I mean, it, it literally gives me chills as I'm sharing this with you to really own who I'm not and who I am and what I'm about and to surrender into an alignment that allows me to be in a co-creation with God every second of my life ever since. I love that because that unconscious competence that you just, that means it just happens. In it's who I am and what I do now, it's, right? It's inside of you. It's not it's not a tangible something. I absolutely love that. If we can focus, if you don't mind, focus on the conscious competence and how we get that bridge yeah. to unconscious competence. But yeah. if we can do it without the cancer. Exactly. I say all the time, you do not need a breakdown to break through. And so many of my peers and industry leaders in personal development and therapy and coaching, they absolutely say you need a breakdown to break through, breakdown to break through, breakdown to break through. And I am the coach that is here to say, can we have an empowering conversation about trauma? A and B, you do not need a crisis. You do not need a breakdown. You do not need to wait for things to get worse, to soar as the real you, the highest expression of you. And so I think that's a really important point to consider. And, and I love that too, because like also some people's bottom breakdown is here. Others is here. Others it's here. And I, it's just like where we want to choose the mm -hmm. down, to the bottom to be. So it sounds like you're like, yeah, the breakdown doesn't have to be way down here. It doesn't have to be counted. It can be, your breakdown could be right here. Well, it's from here it's it's the the so, so how do you get there from, from that? Let's say we're here. Now we got to get through that breakthrough. What is that yeah. secret? Right yeah. There? So let me introduce this term, high functioning unhappiness, to the conversation, and then we'll unpack this a little bit further. I just came up with this term recently, like within the last two months, because I thought, okay, we talk about high functioning depression. We talk about high functioning addiction. We talk about, you know, being high functioning in ways that aren't that preferential, quite frankly, but nobody, I haven't found it anywhere, is talking about this idea of high functioning unhappiness. So before we're going to choose our breakthrough moment, right? I like that better than choose our bottom. You know, we have to have a reason why. So it starts with the power of intention. And if your intention is to be high functioning and happy, then let's just own that. Let's give it to ourselves. So many of you are high functioning and unhappy, and it gets scary to think if we address our unhappiness, then somehow we're going to jeopardize this high functioning part of our life. And I am not here to be the guy that threatens the high functioning part of your life. Oh. I am here to be the guy that threatens the shit out of your unhappiness so that you can actually be high functioning in a sustainable way. I got diagnosed with cancer, not because I caused it. It wasn't my fault, but I was achievement focused and I was grinding and I had gotten on the radio. I started my private practice, was part time for a few years. And then I got on a top 40 radio station and literally overnight my business took off and I had a six month wait list and I was seeing people seven days a week, 10 clients a day with no breaks for years. And there's no way there's not a correlation between me running myself into the ground and nothing was going to stop that train. Cancer came along, boom, all my priorities shifted on an identity level. I was like, wait a minute, I'm not a successful business owner, a sexy wife, like none of who I thought I was, I could even 
do anything with. Right. Because I'm pregnant, 34, pregnant, diagnosed with cancer, given a 5% chance to live. And if that isn't going to reprioritize your life, I don't know what is. I don't and know what is. is. Where, right, Bettina? I'm like, okay, every gorgeous heart listening right now, you do not need that breakdown to break through. And you don't need to tolerate high functioning unhappiness or wait for things to get worse or wait for life to force your hand to go, what is my clear intention? What am I wanting to do with this one precious life? And the thing we don't talk enough about is your life is about how you feel. And if how you feel is correlated with what's going on around you and you can't feel how you want to feel until everything externally changes, now you're a prisoner in your own life. And it doesn't have to be this way. So when we're talking about conscious competence, get intentional and do yourself a favor and focus on how you want to feel. And from there, what do you want to create? And who are you going to be? Because you're not going to wake up one day and know who you are. You're going to wake up one day and go, I'm surviving. I'm high functioning and unhappy. And happiness is just you in sync with you. It's you unapologetic and fearless in the face of any feeling, any circumstance. And I didn't wake up one day and know who I was. I woke up one day in a domestic violence marriage with a two-year-old knowing I can't perpetuate the cycle I grew up in another second, I'm going to have to reinvent my life. I literally had the bottom fall out of my life twice, once in the domestic violence marriage, getting out as a single mom with a two-year-old, and then again with cancer. And both times I got to design me, but it started with being intentional about everything. I'm not here to just react my way through life. I had to get intentional. I had to decide with nothing around me changing how I wanted to feel, what I wanted to create, and who I was going to be. And that was the practice of conscious competence over and over. And I'm not saying I'm exclusively operating from unconscious income or unconscious competence today, because there are doozy moments where I have to bring awareness to the table. But mostly I know I'm intentional. I know how I want to feel. I know what I want to create. And I know who I have to be to do that. It's not natural. This Rebecca Silence, I got the last name Silence in my domestic violence marriage. And I was so committed to silence at the time. My second husband and I joke like he can't comprehend that <laughs> me. It was so silent and meek and, you know, and weak, really. Yeah. I had a lot of strength, but I didn't want anybody to know it. Right. So what tools did you do to un like what what shovel did you do use to unearth that? What tools did you use to identify yeah. your the design that you wanted for your life? Mm -hmm. So let me take you through my practice of emotional healing, because like I said, I was living it even then, even getting out of this domestic violence marriage at 27 years old, which I knew was going to mean I went bankrupt, I was going to lose my house, I was going to lose everything. Yeah. And there was a part of me that was okay with it because it was smoke and mirrors anyway. I just knew that and I wanted a life that was foundationally sound. It didn't get packaged the way I'm about to explain it until mm -hmm. cancer because I didn't have words for it. It just felt like magic. And then cancer happened. And I was like, no, you need to write about what you just do. You had a 5% chance to live. And I call myself a self-healing and relationship expert. And it's because I know the practice of emotional healing. And I know mindset and strategy isn't enough. It's amazing, but it's not enough to change your life or to have you feel how you want to feel or identify as a version of you you can be proud of. So the practice of emotional healing is seven steps. And I have it in my emotional survival kit course, or if you work with me privately, this is how I coach you. I, I coach you to master the practice of emotional healing. So it starts with a commitment to life. Commit to life. So many people are living to die. So many people are oh. like living a slow spiritual death and they don't even know it, right? Yeah. But commit to living. So for me with cancer, 5% chance to live, Rebecca. Um, what if I lived like I was going to live? 
And I know I might not make it. Right. Live like you're going to live. Commit to your life. Commit to getting the most out of it. Commit to living it so fully that you know you went for it, that you rode this life till the wheels fell off and you showed up. And not just in the moments that are going well. It's easy to be our best when everything's going great. I knew when I got diagnosed, I was like, all right, who are you going to be now? Yeah. Game right. on. <laughs> right? Game on. Exactly. And so step one is commit to your life. Live like you're going to live. Step two is what are you living for that's bigger than you? Because at least for me, I didn't always have the self-worth and I mostly didn't have the self-worth to put one foot in front of the other and to strive for greatness for me. I didn't have the self-worth yet. So pick something outside of you that's your carrot for the moments where you don't want to do it for you. What are you living for that's bigger than you? For me, it's my kids. And I will just say, and that's a doozy sometimes as well, because I can't do this work so that they show up perfectly. Mm. I do this work so I can be the mom that's as healed and clear and solid that I can be for them. But they're my motivation. But I've learned it can't be, you know, a pressure on them. Right. To be who I need them to be, right? I want my kids to be who they are, not who I expect them to be. So they're yeah. my motivation, but that doesn't mean there's pressure on them to show You're up. You're not tying their results to who you are. Correct. They're the who that you serve to have the, so that they can have the freedom to live their life, their, their life. number one, right? And game on their life, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I totally, I love that. I think and, it's important. And you hear that so much. And it's like, you, you've started, it's like, you got to know your why, but really when it comes down to it, it's not your why, it's your who. The ones yeah. who right. are significantly more empowered to take action than the ones right. who are only like, oh, my why is to save the earth. For whom? Right. For my Kids, right. My grandkids. right. Right. And when you see that person and can identify that person and visualize them, that it makes all the sense in the world. What's your number three? Yeah. So three is impact. So we're looking at, are you sourcing from a place of making an impact or are you sourcing from continually feeling like you're impacted by life? by people, by patterns, by your emotions. So many of you haven't mastered the art of emotional regulation. And so you're impacted, yeah. which means you can't make an impact as your highest and greatest self. So three is just about owning your impact and your ability to impact. And you're never not impactful, right? So let me make sure that I understand this correctly, right? Yeah. So something happens the way I react to that something emotionally will dictate the impact that I'm able to have. Right. And you're always here. perpetuating, blessing every life in front of you and the world with more of your energy. So you're either energetically a victim, not you a victim, but in a victim consciousness yes. to circumstance, feeling powerless to yes. circumstance, whether it's an emotion or a diagnosis or a divorce or whatever it is, your kids off the rails. You're either impacted and powerless and perpetuating more powerlessness mm -hmm. or you're going, there's nothing outside of me more powerful than me. There's nothing my highest self can't lead through, navigate, face and conquer. Yes. And so number three is about impact so that you're ready for number four, which is about feeling. Oh, let's okay. dive deep on the feeling. Yeah. So here's my distinction. There is a massive difference between your feelings about everything that's going on and the emotion underneath it all that you need to feel. So our, that one more time. I will. And I'll unpack it a little more. So okay. there's a massive difference between your feelings about what's going on mm -hmm. and the emotion underneath it that you need to feel. So many teachers make emotions very complicated, right? Even Brene Brown, as much as I love and respect her, in Atlas of the Heart, there's like 80 emotions. <laughs> I teach five, Bettina. That's it, five. Thank you for making it simple. Okay. We just, yes, yeah. thank you. Not what easy, not easy, but super wicked freaking simple, okay? Yes. Anger is an yes. emotion. 
Got it. Grief is an emotion. Yes. Fear is an emotion. Yes. Joy is an emotion. Love. Excitement is an emotion. Anger, grief, fear, joy, excitement. Anger, grief, fear, joy, excitement. Anger, grief, fear, joy, excitement. Everything else is learned and how you're coping and avoidance to getting to the human emotion underneath it all that you were born with. That's not your fault. That's never there because of anything or anyone. It's just your humanity. Yeah. Everything else is learned. Rejection, betrayal, jealousy, anxiety, depression. I'm not saying it's not real, but what I'm suggesting Learn is yeah. these feelings are more comfortable and comforting than we admit, and they keep us able to distance ourselves from the emotions underneath it all, that if we had a healthy relationship with, we'd be so free. And mm -hmm. the more you have a healthy relationship with anger, fear, and grief, the more you get to have joy and excitement as the rule you live by. So I am not a positivity person at all. I don't think anything happened for me. I don't think anything is here for my highest good. I just know I can rest and have joy and excitement is the rule I live by when I am so willing to be with the fear, to be with the grief, to be with the anger. And the trick is, and I talk a lot about this in my emotional survival kit course, but also in my book, Coming Back to Life in chapter two, how do you heal through, move through and release these healthy emotions that are natural mm -hmm. without making them about anyone or anything or taking them out on anything or anyone. That's the mastery. So when I was sick, my husband some days would say, I don't know which hospital to take you to. Do I need to take you to the loony bin or do I need to take you to get chemo today? Because I would scream when I needed to scream and I would cry when I needed to cry and I would shake when I needed to shake and I would laugh when I needed to laugh. And I would let myself just be excited about I'm still here, but I wasn't in any forcing trying to be someone I wasn't or trying to be somewhere emotionally I wasn't. I was just with the emotions. And when you're that clear channel, you have access to guidance, whether you call that God, whether you call that source, whether you call that the universe. I got access to what I call God because I was so emotionally clear. And what I knew was that's the only thing I had control over. I didn't have control over anything else. Well, could we just unpack? So I'm um, just from talking to so many people and just knowing like a lot of anxiety that I mm -hmm. see people have is based on fear, right? It's stuck fear. It's stuck fear. How do you, how do you get a pry bar and unstick that stuck fear yes. to how does that happen? And I know that I know your book will dive into all the others, but if we could just like dive in and this. Example. I love this. I love unpacking this. And I am not the coach that's like had it easy ever, especially emotionally. I've been almost hospitalized for massive depression. I've been suicidal to the point where I had a plan and I was ready three times in my life. I absolutely understand anxiety and depression. And I want to talk about both. I don't think you can have a conversation about anxiety without also talking about depression because depression is depressing those naturally occurring human emotions of anger, fear, grief, joy, and excitement. It's depressing. It's shutting down those emotions and burying them. And then you just flatline. Anxiety is different. Because anxiety, you're aware whether you're connecting to the truth of the emotion you're denying or not. You're aware you're denying something. Depression is just flatlining, numbing, right? Anxiety is rejection of those naturally occurring human emotions. So I'm with it, but I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. It's not going to, I'm not going to touch it. It's like I think about with cancer, these are cells in your body that spread. If I'm rejecting it, it spreads. That's what happens with anxiety. So the thing to know about anxiety is you're rejecting your truth and your body won't let you forget it. Mm. The thing about anxiety is you also learned it. Same with depression. We wouldn't even know it was an option to cope that way if it wasn't modeled to us. So someone innocently 
And this isn't bashing our parents or our guardians or the people that were role models for us that we looked up to growing up. They teach us how to survive life. And that has us create a survival self that isn't who we are. And that models to us how to navigate difficult moments in life, even if it's unhealthy, right? So someone taught you anxiety as a way to be, as a way to cope, and as a way to avoid your humanity. How do you unlearn that? It was, yeah. How do you unlearn that behavior? So now that we understand, okay, yeah. depression is numb, anxiety is denying, right? And it's a learned behavior because it's not one of the five that you had mentioned, right? Right. Oh, it's so, access to the real emotion underneath it all. So how do you unstick so you can access the real emotion? Yeah. That's getting you that anxiety. Right. So I, I have a three step process that I call the make your triggers your bitch process so that your triggers aren't owning you. You're in charge, right? I like, love that. Okay. I'm going to teach you how to make your triggers your bitch right now. And then I'll okay. give you the other three steps of the practice of emotional healing. Okay. So it starts with the first two steps. There's nothing to do. Our brain wants us to do something. There's oh. nothing to do. There's nothing okay. to do. So step one is you sit with it and you get aware. I'm having an experience of anxiety and I'm just going to sit with it and I'm going to get closer to it. I am going to connect to it so that number two, you can breathe and start to feel. So I just identify it and sit with it. Step one. Step okay. two, I breathe and I feel, and I, I breathe in the anxiety, I breathe out the anxiety, or I breathe in the depression, breathe out the depression, I breathe in the betrayal, I breathe out the betrayal, whatever it is, right? So that I can connect to what's the emotion underneath this I need to feel. Anger. So you get really simple, you're breathing, like, you know how everybody's like, oh, you got to do this, you got this. You're like, just breathe, breathe it in, breathe it out, breathe it in, breathe, breathe, it, in, breathe it out. You get so much closer to it, then you feel safe getting closer to it. You, that's how you take your power back. You go, this thing isn't bigger than me. I'm going to sit with it and identify it. Then I'm going to breathe it in, breathe it out, and connect to the feel, the emotion I need to feel underneath it. Anger, fear, grief, joy, excitement. And then you just let yourself feel. And I don't care if you have a full-on emotional release or not. Just start feeling until you know the energy has moved even a little bit. Yeah. That's yeah. enough. That's enough. That's enough. Then step three, you identify what is the next level experience I want to have instead. So instead of anxiety, I want to be empowered. Instead of depression, I want to feel confident. Instead of betrayal, I want to experience respect. And I know that's just about me respecting me, right? So you yeah. sit with it and identify it. You breathe and feel, and then you identify the next level experience you want to have and you commit to it. And you commit to do you, so once you've identified the next feeling you want to have now you've released that and you've set that the next intention of the feeling you want to have how do you set that how do you set that next the intention of that next feeling you want to have how does that get set? it's an experience right it's an experience of life so what's the experience i want to have instead of anxiety and i know I'm not going to change the external. I can't get anybody else to be who I need them to be so I can be more comfortable, right? Yeah. So this is about, regardless of external factors changing, mm -hmm. this is the experience I'm going to have because it's my right. So you identify the new experience and you commit to it. And then this is where the fifth step in the emotional survival kit is so powerful because it's about trust, you know, and I have tools that go with each of these lessons that I'm teaching for trust and sunglasses, because for so many people, we trust the dark more than the light. Mm, why is that? I know that's like a judgment question, but why, why do we want to trust the dark more than the light? Is it like, what I want, is that another learned behavior possible? Yes, it is. Because what we know for sure is that we can survive survival. We're a vibrational match for it. We know we can live with this. We can survive day in and day out with this. What we don't know is that we can survive alignment. If you can survive survival, though, you can survive alignment. And people don't want to lose, right, that high-functioning part of their lives. They don't want to lose relationships. They don't want to be rejected, misunderstood. They, there's this fear of loss that 
has our ego giving us all of this evidence and permission to stay safe and small because we'll survive. And I share this story, you know, occasionally one of the scariest nights of my life was the first night I spent with my second husband because I was like, he's safe and we're equals and I don't know what to do with this. Mm. I was crawling out of my skin. I, an abusive asshole all day long. I know what to do with you. Yeah. A safe equal. I met my match. It was a wild night. I got no sleep and I just did what I just shared. I was just like sitting with it and breathing and how do I want to feel and who am I going to be? And oh my God, you know, yeah, I know how to survive survival. Therefore I must be able to survive alignment. I just have to trust it. And I have to be willing to let anything that isn't a vibrational match fall away. And that's um, scary, right? Oh, so kind of like don't sabotage it. Right. Because we want to, because we want to be safe and small. But I will tell you right now from alignment, you are so attractive and you will call in if anyone or anything falls away. Such a next level experience with like hearted, like minded, vibrational match people and experiences. Yeah. And there truly is nothing to fear as cliche as it sounds, but you have to be willing to reinvent yourself, reinvent your life and let whatever it is that doesn't serve anymore fall away. And then my sixth step in the emotional survival kit is confidence. You know, the confidence to just stay in the game, to just stay in the game. And then the seventh lesson, I really go deep on time because the more emotionally clear you are, you wouldn't believe how much time you get back. How much time you get back. Oh my God. You have so much time when you're emotionally clear. People ask me all the time, how are you, you know, doing as much as you're doing? How have you done as much as, as you've done? And I mean, it took five straight years to even be able to walk again after chemo. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, all right, you have a 5% chance to live. You're not going to make it. But if you do, I had had drop foot as a side effect, which just meant all the nerves mm -hmm. died down my right leg. And they're like, even if you make it, you won't walk. You're going to go on disability. You know, well, so well, that's not true. I've seen you. Right. <laughs> I've seen you strut. Right. Oh, I'm here. I am here. And I have all the time in the world until I don't anymore. You know, I, there's a way from the practice of emotional healing into emotional mastery. You can be so emotionally sound that your life becomes timeless. I don't worry about time. I have enough time. I only do what I want when I want, how I want. And that's what my clients get to. Is that because you're living to live, not living to die. Yeah. So because you're living to live, your focus is the time that you have is alive. But if you're focused on dying, then your time is, is it's, it's short. You don't have time. Oh, I love how, you, how that all circles and ties back in. Right. And then the more emotional clear, emotionally clear you are, you're not wasting time unnecessarily. Tell me it's more. It's all on your terms now when you're emotionally clear. The guidance will show you. So yesterday, for example, I was going to write all these emails for a sequence for my audience, you know, to correspond with a new ad that we're running for this new free masterclass that I'm offering, the three must know secrets to heal and save your family. And I just was like, not, no, not now. This isn't what I'm going to do. And I just followed my guidance and did some other things. And, you know, when I, I wait for that moment now, I hear it now. I had thought about the radio show six months before I called the station to pitch myself because I was like, I don't have any experience in media. I shouldn't be on the radio. And I was working at a school, part-time private practice, full-time school gig. And I was like, this one day, now. And I called, this was a Friday. Monday, I had a meeting with the owners of the station. I was on the radio the next week. I had a six month wait list, two weeks on the radio, six month wait list. I waited for the now moment. And so that's what I mean by like, there's enough time and you have all this time. And when you're in that aligned zone, man, do things pop. Mm. So I have a question. So. I'm excited about your master's class, your workbook, your book. Like, how can we find that? Yeah. Like, we're like 
Dang, girl. I love you, Rebecca. Like, how, like this, I love how you're to the point. I love how it's not super fluffy. I can see how this is simple and clear, actionable results right away, like impact now, right? And not saying like, per, like whatever perfect is, but definitely turning that 180 and going in the opposite direction yes. for those who, who could really value. How yeah. do we... How do we do that? How do we get a hold of you? And Yes. Please visit me at RebeccaSilence.com. Rebecca has an H. And from there, you can sign up for the masterclass right away and just press play and just immerse yourself. It's an hour long. It's a blast. And it's not just here to elevate family life or life at home. It's really a masterclass in leadership because even at work and with your teams and with your clients, if there's any upset, it's unhealed family dynamics. Like every time. Nobody else is going to tell you that. But I'm going to tell you all the corporate coaching I do, it's family coaching. I just don't. Oh, know. that's interesting. How did how did you come about that? Like how what what's a, how did that common denominator come about? Oh, Bettina, you're not mad at this coworker. They just remind you of your asshole stepmother or your <laughs> grandparent or your sibling. Like seriously, it's all family dynamics. It's the and I, that you bring him into the relationship. Uh -huh. Isn't that so often the case? Yes. Right, right. So attraction 101, we attract what we haven't healed yet. And when people are struggling oh, no. in relationships, they change the person. And then it's the same pattern with the next person. And it happens at work as much as it happens at home. And people just don't talk about it. So the three must know secrets to heal and save your family is here for all kinds of healing for you in relationship. And it includes professional growth as well. And then the emotional survival kit, my book, you can get anywhere books are sold, but you can get it right from the website too. So the best thing to do is go to the website, check out my courses, check out the coaching, check out the masterclass, DM me. You know, you can write me right from the website your biggest takeaway, even from this conversation, I'd love to meet you. I'd love to hear, you know, your world and your life right now and however I can support. Um, and then you could also check out the YouTube channel. The Rebecca Silence YouTube channel has a ton. Oh, and follow. That's yes. a channel. Subscribe. Where and yes, please yes. subscribe. I love your nuggets. I love how clear and concise your nuggets are. I remember my dad telling me, he's like somebody who understands truly, truly, truly understands the subject, right? Can explain it with clarity because they can simplify it to where any 10 year old can understand it. It can be NASA's science, whatever. And I love the clarity that you have. And that only comes from your ability to understand it, that you articulate in such a way that we kept, we're able to not go around in circles. We actually have probably the shortest podcast I have done. Okay. <laughs> right but incredibly impactful is there i have another question yeah. is there anything that you're like man i wish we would have covered this we didn't cover this and i should have covered this i mean there's so much i could say but really i just want people to hear me reiterate how important it is to me that you have a life you love, that you have a life on your terms. And you have no idea how beautiful marriage can be when you are the healed you leading your life versus the survival you just playing out your past on repeat. I want you to have an extraordinary romantic relationship, an extraordinary experience of being a parent, an extraordinary experience of living out your ability to serve professionally at the highest levels. I just want you to have it all and to know it is safe to have it all and to know it is safe to receive the good stuff. We touched on it. Why is joy and excitement so hard to trust? Well, we just think life is how it was growing up and your levels of dissatisfaction in your life now are directly correlated with your levels of dissatisfaction growing up that we don't have permission to own or to even articulate. And if you're anxious, if you're knowing there's more for you, it's because there's a higher level of life experience available for you. I want you high functioning, 
and happy. I want your kids to have healed parents. And I want you careful with every heart that you meet because you've already mastered that with yourself. And thank you so much for having me. And it's been so fun. Let me just say this really quick to watch you go from this show being an idea to it's happening and you're in full swing. And I just applaud you for using your voice and your platform to serve. So let me just say that. Oh, I appreciate you so much. And thank you for joining. Like, can you just believe that this I, I'm having the best time because it's a blocked out time to have an amazing conversation with amazing folks like you talking about their passion, their expertise, and their contributions and impact they're making on the world. And you're an incredible woman.